signature on it. Yes, that's what I was going for. <laughs> I've always admired directors that had a signature. Yeah. But we don't want a signature. We want somebody that's going to, you know, execute the script. And and I understand that. They want to pick somebody that's going to do that. At the same time, I'm like, the script is done. I, you're going to watch my dailies every day. If there's something in the one day of dailies, you hey, that's two Michael Davis. Don't do it again. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think I'm going to really be able to change the script that's written? It's already cast. It's already got, you know, Bruce Willis in it. It's already got cast. How am I going to change the tone so much to make it Michael Davis, right? Um, but they're still so concerned that they get the right guy to fit, fit their um, product, their brand, that they 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 don't they wouldn't want my I could elevate the cool action and go oh my god it's so fun and I, that scene was great they don't really want that they don't really need that they they don't want to take the risk of me doing something eccentric right and I, so so there are a lot of different things that happen when you know unless you're Wes Anderson right most uh, studio movies are um, uh, products I mean even look at like one of my favorite uh, directors is Bob Zemeckis. And if you look, uh, Back to the Future was sort of the, the, the culmination of all this stuff. But if you look at his stuff like Used Cars or I Want to Hold Your Hand, there is a Bob Zemeckis style of performance that is, I don't want to call it cartoony or camp because that would denigrate it. It's not. It's just this highly enthusiastic, energized, when, when Doc Brown, I'm sending you back. To the future, but you still buy it in the context. It's realistic for Doc Brown. He had this style, right? But then as you go on and he does that, you know, what was the, I can't even remember his later movies. They're more homogenized, right? I mean, even, I mean, he could never do that kind of performance in Forrest Gump. And Forrest Gump's a great movie, but it's not Bob Zemeckis' signature. And Forrest Gump was a great novel, so it really isn't even his. Stood alone. Yeah. yeah. And and so a lot of these guys, I think somebody like Bob Zemeckis realize it's harder to write a good story and then get it through the machine and direct. I could sit around for three years as Bob Zemeckis after, even after Back to the Future and finding something awesome. Or if they're going to send me, hey, you know, there's this, you know, this movie with Tom Hanks in it, and it could be Academy Award winner. Yeah, I'm in. Or they send him. I do give him credit for the CGI thing that he did with, uh, you know, um, Lieutenant Dan. Uh, what, what, what was the, yeah, the, um, well, anyway, you know, he had that studio up there that he was going to do. No, it. he had, well, Lieutenant Dan didn't have any legs yeah, later they, on. Yeah. Oh, you're, so which one are heart, you talking about? In Forrest Gump. I thought you were talking about Forrest Gump. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But he did those CGI movies. He did the one with the naked fighting in it, the CGI. What oh, was it? Beowulf, know. right? Oh, and okay. did he do um, the Polar Express? Was that him? Um, he did. He had he he executive produced uh, Monster House, which I thought was really good. But again, unless it has the backing of a Disney or Pixar, sometimes these movies. Anyway, he was trying to do something where he didn't have to get up at five a.m. and go to the set and be anyway. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. wish that Bob Zemeckis had more signature. Steven Spielberg's earlier stuff has more of a signature. Yeah. Somehow they get worn down and they just want to work. Yeah, right? right? And I and I find that boring and my favorite directors are people, you know, you know, you know like uh, Wes Anderson or you know most recently the you know, the most awesome movie, you know, in the past 10 years was Jojo Rabbit. If anybody's seen that. I anyway, just got that as a screener. You got, yeah, it's so awesome. Yeah. I've heard that, hmm. Michael. What what was the uh, what was the the thing that led you to uh, get into this business? Yeah, that was going to be my question. You know, sure. I kind of was stupid. You know, you read about all these guys <laughs> oh. like um, you know hey, Steven Spielberg was thanks, making mom. <laughs> yeah, no, I was. I you know I love going to the movies. I love James Bond, but somehow I didn't connect that there was actually a career or a job out there. Mm -hmm. Oh. And because I could draw, I'm, I'm good at drawing, I want to go to art school, right? And so I, and I was, you know, I always liked these, uh, this uh, illustrator, N.C. Wyeth, he did the Treasure Island or the Norman Rockwell because they were more storytelling imagery. But even when I was going into illustration, there was no home for that storytelling illustration. Uh, it was just dying, right? There was and but I like telling stories, so I realized, oh man, I always wanted to tell stories. I had thought about becoming an animator, 
And so I had gone to art school at Parsons School of Design, majored in il illustration, and I realized I wanted to make films. And so then I went to USC Film School okay. for graduate school. But again, <clears throat> it's a young man's game.